Best Sales Training. My name is Mark Ackerman. Today we're going to convert a calendar date to the day of a week. November 19th, 2008 is a Wednesday. August 13th, 2009 is on a Thursday. January 4th, 2010 is on a Monday. I know you've heard time is money. Whether we're setting appointments, accepting payment arrangements, or planning holidays, the ability to calculate the day of the week from any date is always helpful. Perhaps we have an obligation every Tuesday, a golf game every Wednesday, or need to avoid making appointments on our days off. This calculation may seem difficult at first. However, since we're usually dealing with a day in the near future, there are some shortcuts to break this town into a simple equation that can be utilized every time a date is given. Let's start by examining the equation itself. This breaks down into an algebraic formula. Some of the information is memorized and the rest is added. Let's take a look at this formula. We start with the equation for the century, plus the last two digits of the year, plus the last two digits of the year divided by four, plus the day of the month, plus the significant value of the month, divided by seven. This will give a value which has either a remainder or not. It is the remainder that establishes the day. I know this may seem a little complicated, but just stick with me. We've simplified this even more. The information you need to know can be downloaded from this site. We'll start with the number seven times table, or in other words, 7 times 1 equals 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 3 is 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, and then 70. You don't need to be too concerned as 5 times 7 equals 35, but just to know that 35 is divisible by 7. We then need to know the significant value of the months. The values are January equals 0, February equals 3, March equals 3, April equals 6, May equals 1, June equals 4, July equals 6, August equals 2, September equals 5, October equals 0, November equals 3, and December equals 5. The next thing we need to know is the value of the day of the week. This is the easiest. Sunday equals 0. Monday equals 1, Tuesday equals 2, and so on and so forth to Saturday, which equals 6. Now the century. From 1900 to 1999, the value is 0. From 2000 to 2099, the value is 6. Let's start by taking the date July 15, 2008. This was a Tuesday. Now how do we calculate this? The century is 2000, so we start with a value of 6, and then we add to the year 08, and then we add 2, which is 8 divided by 4. Now, if there is a remainder in the year divided by 4, as there would be in 2009, always round down. We're calculating how many leap years there's been since the start of the century. We then add the day of the month, in this case it's 15, and then the significant value of the month, in this case, being July, it would be 6. We add this together and it equals 37. We divide 37 by 7 and we come up with 5 with a remainder of 2. Since we have 2 as a remainder and 2 equals Tuesday, the day would be Tuesday. But let's shorten that down a little bit more. I don't know about you, but for me, I make arrangements in the very near future. So let's condense this formula into an equation that only has a few steps. For 2008, if we take the century code, the year, and the leap year together, it would equal 16. So for any date in 2008, we start with 16. Any date in 2009 would be 17. In 2010, it would be 18. In 2011, it would be 19. In 2012, it would be 21. Now to figure that same date, if we take the base number of 16 plus the date of 15 
plus a significant value of the month, which is 6. This equals 37. 37 is close to what number in a times table of 7? It would be 35. So 37 minus 35 equal 2, and 2 equals Tuesday. Let's take March 10th, 2009. We start out with 17, our base number for 2009, and then 10 for the day in the month, and then 3 for March. 17 plus 10 equals 27, and 3 more is 30. Now 30 is 2 more than 28. So March 10th, 2009 would be on a Tuesday. How about Christmas, 2008? For our base number, we would have 16 plus 25, the day of the month. Now this would equal 41, and then add the significant value of December, which is 5. This would equal 46, which is 4 more than 42. So in the year 2008, Christmas Day would be on a Thursday. Again, the base number for 2008 would be 16, then the day of the month, which would be 25, plus the significant value of the month, which would be 5. 16 plus 25 plus 5 equals 46. Now, if we know our times table of 7, we know that 7 times 6 equals 42. Again, we don't need to calculate 7 times 6 as long as we can remember 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, and 70. Since we know 42 can be divided by 7, 46 minus 42 equals 4, and 4 equals Thursday. A few holidays are certain days of the week. For example, Mother's Day is the second Sunday in May. Memorial Day is the last Monday in May. Father's Day is the third Sunday in June. Labor Day is the first Monday in September. Election Day is the first Tuesday in November. And Thanksgiving is the fourth Thursday in November. Let's calculate what day Memorial Day will be in 2009. Memorial Day is the last Monday in May. To calculate this, let's find which day the first day of May will be in 2009. It would be Friday. Again, we start with 17, and then the day of the month, which would be 1, and then the month's significant value, which would be 1. This equals 19, which is 5 more than 14. 5 equals Friday. Now, Memorial Day is the last Monday. So if Friday is the first, the first Monday would be the fourth. If we add 7 to this number, the next Monday would be the 11th, then the 18th, and then the 25th. If we add 7 to 25, this would equal 32. So the last Monday would be the 25th. This equation can be calculated in a split second once you memorize the information needed to make the calculation. So if someone tells you that they'll be in your office to make a payment on November 27, 2008, you can tell them no. This is the fourth Thursday of November, which is Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining me today. For the best sales training, I'm Mark Ackerman.